Highway Memories. This week I get a chance to sit down with Bob Park, talk about his racing past and present, and Bob's an excellent interview. Have a look. Hi everyone, welcome to another special edition of Dragway Memories. I've got a special guest with us here today, Bob Park. Welcome Bob. Thank you. Thanks for being here and we're going to talk a little bit about your very big career. I know you're not finished yet by any stretch, but uh, tell us what got you started. What uh, got you started in cars and, and drag racing in particular? I think it was all peer pressure when I was a teenager. Peer pressure, Leo, and all your friends were doing drag racing and street racing? And they weren't drag racing. Uh, they were interested in cars. And I'd heard about drag racing. I started in 1963. So 63, so that's a couple of years ago. Oh, we still have the flags there. Flag starts still, yeah. yeah. There's no Christmas tree yet. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so then you started drag racing in 63, or? I did. You did, yeah. 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 64, and we got the Crown Decks. Got the Crown Deck timers in 1964. And that's when I really first started drag racing. They really uh, got a car that I could run. Right, so before that it was just your regular car that you had on the street. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then in 1964, you uh, built a special car for drag racing. Oh, 57 two door wagon. Kind of a rare piece. Wow, that would be a rare car today. Yeah. Uh, I started out with just a six cylinder and everything, just, but that's all I learned. Yeah, yeah, and was that a standard transmission? Yep. Three in the tree? Uh, no, I went. I bought my first piece of speed equipment. I bought a shifter. Oh, a Penta, Penta shifter. Oh, uh, yes, I remember that. They were famous for their wheels mostly. I cut a hole in the floor, yeah, and my so buddies and I we rigged up this rigged up the linkage and whatnot. And I scrapped that transmission two years ago. With wow, the shifter. They, still, they still had it up to now. Yeah. Holy cow! So. In 1964, you're developing your your racing talents, and when did you uh, figure that this is something that you're going to do uh, for an extended period of time, or did that ever come up? You just decided that you're just going to play around until it wasn't fun anymore. It just evolved. Uh, you know, I played with my dad's trucks. I was always yeah. working on that stuff, and we had an engine one day, and we stuffed that in the wagon. We took that out and see what. So it started with now. I did two, 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 265 cubic inch order, and we went to a four speed and rear end oh, yeah. and then I had to buy tires. Uh, 1969, uh, the car was a record holder. Uh, In 69 by, already, you were a record holder already. Yep. By 1969. Yep. Wow. Uh, that, that car, I sold it so I could build my house. And Bob, my yeah, Bob Slater. Bob Slater had the car. Yeah, the a car. famous car for him too. And he set more records with it. He did. Yeah. In 71 or 72, I stopped. Uh, I was raising kids then. Yeah, that's more important as well. In 1979, I built a 61 Chevy taxi cab. That car was a famous car. I mean, must have did a lot of winning with that car. I made more money drag race in 1979 than that did work. <laughs> Holy cow. Wow, that's a money America, maker. I was making American money, racing across the border. Wow, that's fantastic. So whatever happened to that car? I sold it to uh, a guy down uh, in Wheatsport, New York, and I have no idea where the car went from there. Uh, hopefully it survives. 19, and then 1985, I had that car up to 84, and then uh, 85, uh, I got a new partnership with uh, Peter Swazki, who owns Apple Tree and Apple Tree Engineering up in New York. And we built a super stock, and that car wouldn't fall out of a tree. Uh, we raced everywhere in good wind and good wind and good wind and good But I brought it home in 1990, and we started bragging and racing then with that thing. Uh, my partner, Dean Boggish, and I, yeah. we won everything there was in here in Ontario. Yeah, and you guys were a force to be reckoned with. You guys are very, very competitive. Just super pro. 
that's when uh, the evolution of uh, of uh, all the electronics. All the all electronics. Out there. I was selling them. I had a contact. Oh. I had a contact in the U.S. and I was selling them here, and that was supporting our drivers. Okay. A lot of guys would watch what we were doing. Yeah. And stuff. And then you're with you winning on a more than regular basis and Dean uh, doing a hell of a job driving that car. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I sold that car in uh, before and took a guy out of it I hate it. Uh, my wife said to me one day, don't you think it's time to wrap it up? So I did. Just and like that. And then I lost her in uh, 2000. Yeah. And I had a little plenty of gas I was working on in the garage, and I got that going. That car was a good car, too. It was fun, but it wouldn't fit in the super stock slate of Brackham Oh, okay. And then we built the old, then we bought the uh, uh, Camaro. Uh, oh. Well, that was the old school build that we built back in uh, 85. But now I've got my Camaro, which uh, Apple Tree Engineering built. They built that car, too, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. And that's been very successful. That's, that's what I still have. You still have that car today? Now that car has had numerous different engines. And oh. 327s and 350s and uh, holy cow. I got yeah, six different carburetors for it. Six different carburetors. Wow. So uh, that car has been a good car for you too. And you won the Can Am Championship in that car, I believe. Yep. Third last year. Good car. This is my last year. This is your last year. I'm selling the car, I'm selling all the And you're going to pack it in. You're going to watch. You're going to have fun with your guys. Just come out. Yeah. Come out when you want to come out. And, uh, I just have other things I want to do. I don't finish my Okay, we are back at Cayuga Motorsport for some bracket racing and other things. Check it out. All right, we have blue. Popped up T Roadster. Looks body. like an old cop machine or something. Some weird, uh, like an eight comp or something, mm -hmm. coupe or something. Coupe or something. Uh oh, look who's in the other lane. It's the Opal GT of Mr. Chilton. Chaz Chilton. Chaz Chilton, there you go. Chaz to Tony Sawatsky over there. Yeah. Good old guy. Up against Bob Montjoy in the digger. Joy's uh, campaign dragsters for a lot, a lot of years. Set some records. Yeah, B dragster. And Edie is in the Canadian Drag Racing Hall of Fame. She is, yes. And they're going to stage it up here as we await. With dry hops and that takes a little longer to stage these cars. And Jimmy Jewer. Jimmy Jewer. He never really got a handle on this car. But he certainly tried. This car was originally built for Jim Adi. John Torelli. And it was uh, sold pretty much immediately. I don't know if it was outlawed for Pro modified, and there was some reason why. Yeah, the suspension was solid. Solid rear suspension. It was illegal. And he just. I don't think he had the power. A, a car like that needs copious amounts of power to make yeah. it work, and uh, I'm not sure if he had it or not. Although he ran an Audi power plant. So, I don't know. The car disappeared. I don't know where it is now. Yeah, I was just going to say, I wonder where it is today. Yeah, it's sitting in somebody's garage in pieces, probably, yeah. as a roller at the very least. But uh, when it came out, it was quite the thing, I'll tell you that. And it took him a while to get it staged, and off he goes. He's on and off the throttle a bit, and bouncing around there. No bump at Cayuga, is there? Still isn't, is there? Anyway, we shouldn't probably go there. 
I want to keep my job. What's going to happen oh, here? Here we go. Oh my goodness, and that is Brian part. Travers in the ex uh, Mark uh, Thomas car up against uh, Hamilton's own Johnny Wright. Wow, funny car against ProMod. Brian he disappeared, right? And the car disappeared right after this. But he bought the car. I talked to him at the car show before, you know, in the in the winter, and he's all gung ho and he was gonna set the world on fire and shows up to this race and I really don't think he ever came back. I don't know if he heard it or or what. Well, it's too bad he couldn't take advantage of his new car. Yeah, well. Hard deal to do. Yeah, if it was easy, everybody would be running funny cars and fuelers and stuff, but they're not. That's not cheap. And a little late off the get with the uh, funny car there, but uh, yeah, he's going to get it down there. I can't read. John Wright, your winner. Yeah. Looks like the funny car just didn't have enough Wheaties. Interesting. Rear footage of that car doing that, I must say. All right, so he's out in the end there. There, we're going to make sure we're going to come back to Mike Ferry in the Ferry Fast Dart. Mike had some notoriety with this car, won a few big races on the cover of Bracket Racer magazine. He was also famous for him and uh, another gentleman have bought Frank Elliott's BO29 car. This Hemi Cuda, one of two, brought into Canada. The four-speed car. They uh, they own it now, apparently, or they might still own it. But they had bought it off the gentleman that had it for oh 40 years or so or more. Yeah, he had just stored there, and the lettering was sanded off it, and the tunnel run was taken off it. Yeah. And that was it. Left there after that. All right, Malibu up against the Duster. Love the scoop on the duster. Same one I got on my car, Bill. Yeah. Pro stock. More of a pro stock 70s look. But if that is, in fact, the Malibu, that I think it is, it should win. It did. There you go. Charlene back again against Dave. I can't remember your last name, and when I hear it, I'm going to go, yes, that's the guy. That's just what happens. Well, we'll soon find out if this is uh, bracket racing or time trials. I believe it's time trials. It's a lot easier to shoot time trials where you get both cars it in sure the frame. Is. Oh, maybe not. There goes Charlene. She's probably down in the 15 to 14 second zone. And Dave's about an 11 second car. Well, he's right beside her. He's around her. He won. I'll have to ask Charlene. Warren Jackson back again, up against a nice, clean, sanitary-looking uh, Chevelle over there. Mm -hmm. it's 67. Yeah. A very, very cool year for Chevelle, 66 six and 7. Well, 8, 9, 2, and 70. Yeah. I like Chevelle. A lot of Chevelles. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we... Sneaking in the tower there a little bit there as we zoom out. Yeah. Warren Jackson, he had a different car every year as long as I knew him. I actually couldn't tell you how many cars the man had. He had a dragster one year. Let's see if he can reel in this Chevelle. Chevelle's out good. Well, let's see, Warren, how'd you do? He did it. Yeah. Good old Warren. Caught the Chevelle. There's the pink machine of Charlene Lepp. She's waving at you. There's Dave, I can't remember your last name. He died 11.60. And a nice looking third gen IROC up against the second gen. F Body Chevrolet is on the line here at Cayuga. Put your window up. There we go. I put my money on the second gen, but some of these third gens, but this is before nitrous and turbos and all the sneaky stuff. Yeah, I think that the... Uh, 305 in the third gen. 
second gen should have them covered. Yeah. Should be coming into the picture right about now. Okay, folks. Getting down the end here. We'll see you all next week here on Dragway Memories. episode of Dragway Memories. See you next week. Remember, hook hard, go straight, don't be late, and may your God bless you. See you later.